Hello students, I just want to do a quick follow-up video on the presentation from class today because I think it was a little bit unclear about uh, how we find the pH of salt solutions. So uh, just to review, salts are actually formed by the reaction between an acid and a base. So we have this classic example, HCl and NaOH, and they make NaCl and water. Um, and of course, if you had a different acid or a different base, uh, they would make a different salt. Uh, the important thing to notice about the salt that's formed, the NaCl, is that uh, it is made up of the conjugate base from the acid. So in other words, HCl has contributed the Cl minus over here to my NaCl. So it's made up from the conjugate base of the acid and also the cation here, the Na, has come from the base sodium hydroxide. So acids are going to make the anions and bases are going to make the cations. And what we're going to do to determine the acidity or basicity of the salt is look at those two parts individually. So look at the sodium that came from sodium hydroxide and look at the chloride that came from hydrochloric acid, and then determine which one of those is going to influence the pH more. So you can remember this because acids make anions and bases make cations. Okay, so we have several examples here. These are actually different than the ones I did in class. Um, some of them are the same, but some of them are different. So um, I have these here because what we're going to do is talk about each one. So the first one we have calcium iodide. So we're going to ask ourselves, what are the parent acid and the parent base? So acids make anions, and I have I minus as my anion. So that means that it came from HI, which is a strong acid. You can refer back to the notes from our first uh, lecture about acids and bases to find the list of strong acids and bases. Um, but HI is one of the strong acids. So I've got I minus, which is from a strong acid, and then I've got CA, and CA comes from calcium hydroxide, because bases make the cations, and uh, calcium hydroxide is also a strong base. And so now I have a strong acid and a strong base, and together they cancel each other out, and the salt will just be neutral when it dissolves in solution. Now looking at the next one, I have nickel and chloride. So again, uh, the parent acid here is making the anion, which is chloride. So the parent acid must be HCl, and that's a strong acid. And the parent base is nickel hydroxide. Now nickel hydroxide is actually a weak base. It's not on our list of strong bases. And so uh, we have a weak base and we have a strong acid. Now what do you suppose happens when the weak base and the strong acid combine? It turns out the strong acid, uh, you can think about this as if this the strong acid wins. There's a strong acid and a weak base the solution is going to end up being acidic. Now, I've highlighted here in red that uh, anything that's weak, if they're strong and strong, they cancel each other out, we get neutral. But if things are weak, then we have to sort of think about them a different way. Um, so in this case, again, we had a strong acid and a weak base, and so we can think of it as the strong acid is winning here, so the solution is going to be acidic. On the next one, we have sodium bromate. Um, bromate comes from bromic acid, which is not a strong acid, it's a weak acid. And sodium comes from sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. So we have a weak acid and a strong base, and you probably guessed it, the strong base here wins. This again is just the way that we're thinking about it right now. We're going to explore why it's happening a little bit later. But the strong base and the weak acid combine, we're going to end up with something that's basic. Our next example is KBr. So our bromide ion comes from HBr, which is a strong acid, and our potassium ion comes from potassium hydroxide, which is a strong base. So when we combine these together, that'll be neutral. Next we have ammonium chlorate. So chlorate comes from chloric acid, which is one of the strong acids, HClO3. And NH4+, plus, this one's a little bit different, um, but it comes from the weak base, ammonia. So we have here a strong acid and a weak base that are combining, 
and we'll end up with an acidic solution. Copper two sulfate. The sulfate comes from sulfuric acid, which is a strong acid. The copper is not one of the strong bases, copper hydroxide. And so that one's going to be a weak base. So again, we have a weak base and a strong acid. It'll end up being acidic. We have sodium oxalate, where oxalate is the conjugate base of a weak acid, and sodium is from a strong base, sodium hydroxide, so this one will end up being basic. Now, if you remember, in class today, we actually calculated the pH of the solution of sodium oxalate, and it was basic. It was 8.6. Um, so... Uh, just a connection there that, in fact, this is real. <laughs> um, and think about that because, remember, we said it was the oxalate that was the active part there. That was the thing that was making it basic. Okay, the last example we have is NH4F. F is coming from a weak acid, hydrofluoric acid. Ammonium is coming from the weak base, ammonia. And so here, it's difficult to say what's going to happen. In fact, if we have a weak base and a weak acid that are reacting together, we have to actually look at the Ka and Kb values. So let's look at that for NH4F. This is the conjugate base of a weak acid plus the conjugate acid of a weak base. The F- minus is the conjugate base of the weak acid HF, and the NH4 plus is the conjugate acid of the weak base NH3. So how do we decide what, which one wins in this case? We're going to now look at the Ka or K and Kb for these two things that actually make up the salt here. So for NH4+, plus, our Ka is about 10 to the minus 10. And for F-, minus, our Kb is about 10 to the minus 11. And we're going to look for whichever one is larger. In this case, NH4+, plus has a slightly larger Ka than the Kb value for F-. Minus. Since this one is larger, it's going to be more important in determining the pH of the solution, and this salt will actually be acidic. Now I'd like you to take a second to answer some of these questions. We've said so far that the stronger acid or base wins over the weaker acid or base to determine whether the salt that's formed by that reaction is acidic, neutral, or basic. But I want you to think about what the mechanism is for the acidity or basicity of the salt. Is it caused by the parent acids and bases or by the conjugate acids and bases that make up the salt itself? And how do these uh, compounds or ions interact with water? Uh, the things, the components of the salt, how do they interact with water? You can use NaF as an example while you're thinking about this. So go ahead and pause the video and take a minute or two to write down answers to some of these questions. Okay, I hope you had a second to think about each of these things. Um, essentially, what I want to point out is, even though we have this sort of like uh, easy way to remember what happens, if you have a strong acid and it reacts with a weak base, then the acid wins and the uh, salt will be acidic. Um, that's an easy way to think about it, but actually the mechanism of action is because of the actual components of the salt. So if we look at NaF, for example, we have a strong base uh, parent and a weak acid parent. So we know that this one would be basic. Um, now the question is, why is it basic? Is it because I started with sodium hydroxide? No, it's because this F minus is the conjugate base of a weak acid, which makes it a relatively strong weak base. And so F minus is the thing that's going to be causing the basicity of the solution. Remember, Na, because it's coming from a strong base, it's negligibly acidic. Okay, so this doesn't contribute at all, and this one does contribute, which is why it ends up being basic. Okay, so here's a quick quiz just to test whether you understand what we've been talking about. Um, which of the salts below would form a basic solution when dissolved in water? I'll give you a few seconds to think about that. Go ahead and pause the video.
Okay, now that you've thought about it, what's our correct answer here? It turns out it's lithium fluoride. The reason is that that fluoride ion is the conjugate base of a weak acid, which makes it a relatively strong weak base. And so it will react with water to create hydroxide ions. If we look at the other choices that we have, KNO3 is formed from a strong base and a strong acid, it'll be neutral. Same with NaCl. NH4Br is formed from a weak base and a strong acid. So this salt would actually be acidic in water. Um, barium chlorate is from a strong acid and uh, barium is one of our strong bases, so this one would also be, would also be neutral in water. Um, so lithium fluoride is the only one that will be basic. Uh, we have one more quick quiz. Uh, go ahead and pause the video for a second while you answer and then start it again when you're ready. So now if we think about all of the components of these different salts, we can actually look at each ion and consider its contribution individually. So for example, we've got lithium, sodium, potassium, chloride, nitrate, chlorate, sorry, perchlorate, and sulfate. These guys aren't going to react with water at all. Then we have some that are weak acids, so our ammonium ion and the rubidium ion are both weak acids. But NO2 minus is actually the only one here that's a weak base. And so that's why it will produce a basic solution when dissolved in water. Notice I've switched now from talking about the parents, uh, the parent acid and parent base that make up this salt. And I'm just talking about the salt itself. So NO2 minus all by itself is a weak base, and it's going to interact with water uh, to create hydroxide ions, and that's why the solution will be basic. So finally, take a minute and think about what are salts? How are they related to acids and bases? And given the formula for a salt or an ionic compound, how do you decide whether it will be acidic, basic, or neutral when dissolved in water? Make sure you've got a good handle on this um, for uh, your knowledge and for your exam. And thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day.